Okay, thank you. Next up we have Linda Mallory, uh, educational psychologist, currently rolling out a wellbeing project in schools called FELT. Feel, enjoy, learn and thanks. Um, I hope everybody had a great lunch. Um, I've got a bit of a field coma now, so it might kick in. Um, had lots of wind, so um, I might kind of just fall off in a bit in a minute. Um, I'm Linda Mallory. I'm an educational psychologist, but I've been working in education for the last for the last 30 years as an educational psychologist and teacher. And what I'm seeing also being a parent of a 12 year old and a 13 year old is that relationship between thought and feeling that we talked about earlier this morning which was great Fred, yeah. Fred um, did a, a great presentation about the brain there's lots of talk about how the brain works and that, that's great um, and it's really helpful and insightful about how the brain works but I, I'm seeing that, that what's happening in schools is uh, the need to label children, the need to fix, the need to change. Something that, that's amazing, that children are amazing themselves. They're born with innate well-being. Children are not born needing therapy. And I think sometimes as adults we get in the way of them being who they need to be. And it's a journey that I've been on with my own son in terms of his, his own mental health in terms of feeling that he's not good enough, coming home from school, judging himself and comparing himself with others. So I felt the need to, to create a tool that helps children understand themselves for who they are without being judged. Um, one of the things that um, I felt really helpful in working with children that I talked to, a child that I worked with last week, one of the first things that he said to me is, I am ADHD. He said hello, but he said, I am ADHD, as if that was defining him as a person. And I think we need to move away from, labels can be really, really helpful, but I think it, it's helpful in terms of understanding a child's needs. But ultimately, children just need unconditional love they need to be listened to, they need to be understood, they need freedom, they need a sense of fun and play, and they need to feel safe. When those needs are met, then the symptoms that we see drop away. The anxiety and the stress drop away when needs are met. So what I felt the need to do was create something that talked about that relationship between thought and feeling. So on page 10 of your handout, your um, brochure, which is amazing, it's a really brilliant collection of information. Uh, in there on page 10, there's a feelings wheel. And it's based on the work of David Hawkins, who's a kinesiologist, that talked about the energy of emotions. So low energy, which is the red section on the feelings wheel, low energy is shame and guilt and we know those moments when maybe we felt shame and guilt and we felt that energy energy of emotion emotion energy in motion and high energy is gratitude and we all know that when we feel grateful for something that raises our energy so this, this is something that i've used with teachers parents and children to just notice where they are on that feeling as well, without judgment, without fixing, without the need to micromanage that emotion. And that was talked about earlier on, which was great, to talk about being more compassionate with yourself about the feeling that you've had. So just thinking about a time that you were in that kind of lower section, the kind of anger, fear and sadness, without having to bring that and relive that situation again, just think about well, what, it, what was it that you needed at that moment in time when you were either feeling sad, angry, or fearful. 
And then think about that top quadrant where you've got joy, love, and peace. Think about a time when you were joyful, when you were peaceful, when you were in that moment of love and compassion. What insight did you have when you were in that top half of the circle? Because we have insights and our wisdom comes forth when we're in that top half of that wheel, not in the bottom half. When we're in guilt, shame, fear and sadness, that, that prevents us from being who we need to be. Our innate wisdom comes out when we're in that top half. But not judging the fact that we might have sadness, fear, anger. We judge it as being bad. And the happiness movement has been brilliant for helping us understand what makes us happy. But sometimes we can beat ourselves up thinking we should be happy all the time. We have 70,000 thoughts a day. So in a year, you have that 25 and a half million thoughts. If we micromanage them, and think that we should be happy all the time, that causes stress and anxiety. So what I've developed is a, a journal for, for children. It, it's um, a journal where they can talk about how they feel, what that they've enjoyed, what they've learned, and what they can give thanks for. And it's really helped those children that find it difficult to talk to an adult about how they're feeling or talk to a friend, but they might journal it. And journaling has been proved to help reduce stress and anxiety, and it's also had health benefits. James Panabaker has done a lot of research about journaling being a really useful way of understanding our thoughts and feelings without judging them. But that relationship of we feel our thinking, if as a parent we're thinking everybody else is parenting better than me, when will this Groundhog Day stop? As a teacher, Everybody else is getting it right and I'm getting it wrong. And as a child, I'm hearing children thinking they're not good enough. When I ask children, what do you think you're good at at school? A lot of them saying, I'm, I'm not good at anything. And we need to change this by getting children to talk about who they are, what they are, without judgment, without labeling, for them to just be themselves. So I, I'm doing this work in the schools that I work in in Trowbridge as an independent educational psychologist and what I'm seeing is that openness to have that discussion about the relationship between that we feel our thinking without judgment. So just as an exercise, how long have we got for time? Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Mm -hmm. To just talk to the person next to you about using the feelings well, how do you feel, what have you enjoyed today so far, what have you learned and what can you give thanks for? Just to have a little chat about one of those things that maybe you can reflect on. <laughs> workshops with parents, working with children, and the workshop that I do for parents is usually two days, the, the sessions that I do with teachers is four days, so to do this in ten minutes is a bit, <laughs> a bit of an ask. But what I would hopefully encourage you to do is, is to just use this in terms of just being aware of where you're feeling, because 
as we've talked about before, the research suggests if we're aware of where we are, if we can regulate our emotions and our thinking without judgment, then that helps children. You're a role model. You're a role model for them to model their emotions. Um, can I just read out a couple of, of course, yeah. Um, a teaching assistant that's used this in school has said, the Belt Journal and the Workbook is a lovely resource. Children enjoy the opportunity to stop and think about how they're feeling and to have the opportunity to express themselves without fear and judgment. The children I work with tell them that they feel better about themselves, feel more positive, enjoy school more, and as a result, um, use felt in, a, in a, a fun way. A, child, a year five child said, sometimes it's really difficult, but in a good way, because if, I, if I've had a bad day, I don't want to think about how I feel. But once I've done this, I feel much better, as I can get it out on paper, and it doesn't take um, it out on other people, thinking about what other people think. Thinking about what I've enjoyed and what I'm thankful for helps me a little bit get less cross. If I don't do this, then I would push it all down, and that's not good. So he's talking about repression and suppression at the age of 10. And I just think, that's amazing. If we can help children just understand that relationship between we feel our thinking without judgment. Um, uh, one, one year five child said, I think that uh, we should carry on writing these journals next year. I think adults should do one too. <laughs> Some children draw pictures. They don't necessarily have to write it down. Some children talk to the teaching assistant. They talk to themselves about felt. What do you feel? What do you enjoy? What do you learn? And what can you give thanks for? It's a really simple thing. It's not rocket science. It's not uh, expensive. It's just a way of connecting. And we talked about that this morning, which was great talk about connection being the key to this. Um, one child, which I'll, I'll leave you with because I know we've got to move on, um, said, I describe felt as a personal friend that will always be there for me when I'm angry, upset or disappointed. And when I read that, it kind of made me feel, we can do this, we can make a difference to children's lives with really simple things. It doesn't have to be elaborate. I'm hearing time and time again, I, I can't get my child to be seen by cameras. I can't um, get this outside agency to be involved. We can do little simple things by being human, by just connecting without judgment. Thank you. Thing to end on, I really believe in that as well. Um, we have a couple of minutes for Q's and A's. Does anyone have a question for Linda? Thank you. Hello, hi. Um, I work in the secondary school, Brilliant. and I recommended during the summer time to explore. Um, quite often, the students I work with are anxious about homework, yeah. and that's a really big one. And they see something like journaling as homework, yes. and then that makes them a little bit more anxious. Yeah. What would be advice in relation to that? Well, at that age, I've got a 13-year-old and a 12-year-old, so I completely get that. My sons came up with ELT, and I put the F in front of it, because um, feeling for me is what I'm seeing children finding it difficult to do in terms of connecting with life, connecting with themselves, when they're born connection, connecting. But sometimes that connection just leaves us. <coughs> and we need, to, we, we need to go back to our inner wisdom and find it again. So at that age, for me, it's about peer. Peer group is really important. So if you can get a peer group together talking about this, that's much more powerful than an adult doing a workshop on whatever you want to call it. You know, I've seen anger management done to death. And when you see more anger, you get more anger. But if you, where, where's the joy management? Where's the love management? We need the whole range of emotions. If anybody um, wants to see a really powerful TED talk, Susan David about emotional agility is amazing. And she talks about that need to be human by having all emotions. As if, if we don't, we've got what she calls dead people's gold. And I just think that's really powerful. So for, for adolescent, it's, I, I'm seeing this in secondary schools. I'm using it for secondary school kids. And actually, when they get a buddy to work with, it's much more enjoyable. What I want to do is to do an app so that you can journal um, or just put odd words to just stimulate and, and help you think about those four areas, feel, enjoy, learn, and thanks. 
Um, if anybody knows how I can develop that, that would be great. Uh, anybody that wants to connect, it would be great to just carry on this conversation because I just think it's the most important conversation we're going to have as a generation. Thank you so much. Thank you.